This video is one in a series of videos that cover database topics in three themes. We look at Oracle Apex, Application Express for web applications, relational database concepts for designing and building databases, and SQL, the programming language for working with a relational database. If you want to work with the video series, you can go to this URL to get the scripts and handouts. In this video, we're going to get to the primary functionality that we want to have in our animal shelter application. We want a way to process animals that come into the shelter or get placed out of the shelter. So we're going to create a master detail report and form using the animals and the transactions table. We're going to switch one of the pages to modal mode instead of the regular report page mode and we will edit the appearance of the interactive grid in the data entry form. We'll look at whether or not we need to add LOVs to the master detail form. So I'm logged in to Apex as one of the developers. So I'm going to go into the development application and I want to create a page and I want it to be a form and we've done a single page master detail. Now we're going to do a two page master detail. So I'll click on that. And then notice up here we have the sequence of activities for completing this wizard. I think I'll go with the 150 page numbering. The master page will be animal transactions and that'll be 151 for the detail page. And we'll call that animal animal transaction. Let's see, I'm going to actually switch that to animals processing. Okay, we'll click next and I do want a navigation item and I'll put it under animals. And the first thing will be to pick the animal table. Guess let me pause and pull up the uh, data model before we complete this. So this is the data model or data dictionary that we've imported before and I've left off the LOVs, the tables for reference data. What we're working on here is animal data and the related transactions. Transactions are the way we receive an animal at the shelter, temporarily transfer an animal or place an animal with a home outside the shelter. So back here creating the master detail, we pick the animals table. We'll manage that with the primary key, which is the unique identifier for each row. And our navigation order, I'll go ahead and put animal ID. That selection is off the screen for you, but you should see it if you've been working along with me. So I'm going to move some of the fields from the right side to the left side so they don't appear in the initial page. I'll leave these that I see initially and I'll look at taking the estimated age off, the date created, date modified. I can leave age in, I guess. And I'll click Next. Now the related table is the transactions table. So I'll select transactions, manage that by the primary key, which is trans ID. And then how do these two tables relate to one another? Primary key animal ID and animals related to animal ID, the foreign key field and transactions. I'll leave all the fields to be displayed. Actually, I will only take out date created and date modified because those are populated for us automatically when we create a record or modify a record. And then I'll click create. So let's save this, run it, and see how things look initially. That's right, I don't want the blob, I don't want the image in my initial page. I forgot to take that out. I'll scroll down to animal pick and delete that column. We'll save that and run that. So the initial page 150 is an interactive grid and we have a link 
that will open up a related page in a master detail format. So I'm going to click on Ada, the pencil, which will open up the corresponding page. And what we have here, as you scroll through, is we see a single form format in the master section, which is the animal data, and then the related transaction data is in another interactive grid format. I'm going to modify this. And I should also point out that this particular animal, which is Ada, does not have a corresponding transaction. I do not have a transaction record for all the animals stored in the animals table. But let's edit this so it's a little easier to see. I'm going to make several changes. First off, I want to display the animal ID as display only. That's off my recording screen. So I'm going to take animal breed and move it up with a drag and drop and put it under category because you have the category of animal, dog, cat, or I should say canine, feline, etc. And then within that you have the dominant breed. So what I want to do here is with dominant breed say start new row no and I'm going to move mix up and say start new row no then we'll have primary color I'll do adult size actually I think I'll move name up so that it's at the beginning after mix and the next row primary color start new row no adult size start new row no sex house trained I'll do house trained start new row no spade neutered start new row no we have chip number date of birth I'm just reducing the number of rows by having some of the fields put adjacent to one another on a single row we've done this several times in the past and status I might want to move that up but for now I'll leave it as it is so I'll put status, start new row, no. Let's save and take a look at this appearance. So now we have a more compact form layout for this master detail. I'm going to edit this again. I'm going to put status up here right after animal ID and have it start new row, no. I already had that set. For the primary key field that I chose to display, I always forget to add a label when I switch from hidden to display only. So let's go look at the results of the edits to the properties. So we have a more compact form and now we're at a decision point here. Do we want this form to be fully functional, as in you can create and update data for the animal? Our primary focus is on transaction data in this master detail. Remember that over here in the menu item, if I do a right click on list animals and open that in another tab, we already have an interactive grid where we can click on an edit for a record or create a record and we have this animal form. We have category and dominant breed LOVs in sync so that if you select a category you will only see the related dominant breeds for that category. We've used radio groups and lists of drop-down lists of values to enhance the functionality of this particular form. This is a form for maintaining creating data in the animals table. So if you want this functionality in this form, you will need to go back and look at some past videos. We have videos about LOVs in Apex 08 and Apex 12 and Apex 13 that would help you make the functionality from here correspond to what you see here. You can go to Apex 20 to see how to sync lists of dominant breed with whatever category has been listed. But I would suggest that perhaps you want these fields to be display only. We will add the LOVs so that we get 
not a 43, but the text related to dominant breed ID, whatever that is, but make these fields non-editable and display only, and then only allow data entry in the details section. So I'm going to pause the video, and I'm going to add LOVs where I think it would be useful to have them, particularly when we see something like status four and dominant breed. I want to see what text corresponds to that number. I will also add a page item for displaying the image. I'll, I'll pick up the recording when I start adding that field. So for status, I've done a select list and selected the LOV for status coming from shared components. I've done the same thing for dominant breed. I think everything else is okay other than I want to select several of these fields. So I've done a multiple select by holding down the shift key and over under type, I'm going to switch that to display only. So it won't be available for edit. I can save that and run that and we still see the data, but we can't click into the field to edit the data. I will, I will add a page item. Right click, page item, put that under animal pick, and change that to, that will be, that will be display image, which is off your recording screen. This needs to be all in caps. So if there's a picture, we now see the picture. I would take that and find the property to say add new row or start new row no and save that. When I look at this, I realize I still have an issue because when I used the select list and the fields were editable, I could see the associated text for dominant breed 43 and status for number four. I've lost that when I set those fields to display only. So if I come back and edit this and select dominant breed and it's display only, then I can change this to page item value based on display value of list of values. So I select that, save that, run that, and now I see American Blue Healer. Do the same thing for status. Display only. And then under settings, have it look at the list of values, which I've already designated, and run that. And we're back to seeing the text. The other thing that I want to do here is I want to change the, the width of some of these fields. I don't want to have to scroll to get over to description. We want to be able to select a transaction type. I'll do that in the next video. I'm going to add LOVs for client ID and personnel ID and change the layout here. So let me do the LOVs first. And remember what region I'm in. The first region is the single form view on a table. The second region is the detailed table, which is transaction. So I want to select client ID, make that a select list, scroll down and find my list of values section, and I want that to be the client list, which would be anybody in the person's table, because even employees could be the client that's bringing in or taking home an animal. Then I want to select the personnel ID, Make that also a select list. Scroll down to list of values, shared component. But now I want the employee purse ID list, not the clearest name. But this will list only employees with the related personnel data displayed. So I'll save that and I'll run that. So if I'm going to add a row, for example, then I have the drop-down list for personnel or client. I'm doing a separate video about transaction type. It'll be the one right after this. Delete the row.
I don't want the record, but I do want to change the width of these columns. I will go to Actions. This is something I forget about the interactive grid. It's been around for a little bit, but it still feels pretty new to me. What I want to do is select Column. I want to pick a column that's displayed, and I want to set a column width. So for trans date, I'm going to try 120. I don't have a good feel for this. For trans type, I'm going to do 180. Client ID, I'll do 180. Personnel ID, I'll do 180. And click Save. And let's see what the difference is. Now we see a more compact layout of the columns. And I might want to change that again. I might want to make further changes, but I need to make sure I come up to Report and Save because I'm saving these settings as the, de as the default report settings for all users. So let's take a look at TransType in the next video, and then we'll test this master detail to make sure that it is functional.